What's going on guys? Welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. So I'm taking the day off from the CB750 project that I have underway because I'm missing a couple of little seals for the engine. Uh, for things like the clutch cover and stator cover. So I can't really button the engine back up and put it back in the frame until we have those. So I am going to take the day to switch gears and jump on my KLR. So some of you guys are familiar with this bike. Some of you may have uh, missed that video or not watched it. This is a bike I picked up a couple of months ago. It is a 2008 KLR 650 to do some adventure riding uh, with some buddies of mine. So we've been out blasting around and getting this thing dirty and having fun. But what I need to do is go through the entire bike for maintenance. I kind of bought this bike with no history of maintenance. The guy I bought it from had another bike and kind of occasionally rode this and wasn't even sure, you know, when the last time anything was really changed. He doesn't even know if it had the doohickey mod or anything like that done to it. So today I want to take the opportunity to go through the entire bike, get this thing in tip top shape so we can go out and have some more fun with it. So here's all the parts and pieces we're gonna to use to get this bike fully sorted. I went ahead, just turned to the guys at Bike Master and went through their catalog, picked out everything I could find for the KLR, uh, just to make sure that all the parts and pieces are good quality, they don't break the bank. If you wanna check out any of these parts or parts for your bike, you can go to bikemaster.com. These guys have been in the game since like the early 80s and I've used their parts for a long time, so I'm happy to use them on this build as well. We're gonna be doing a full oil change, brand new battery, air filter, chain, both sprockets. I also picked up some of their tools just to have on the bike. I wanna have like a permanent uh, on-bike toolkit. So multimeter for any kind of electrical diagnostics we need to do, tire irons, little air compressor should we need to fix flats, and then that's a tire repair kit down there as well. We're also going to be knocking out what they call the doohickey mod, which uh, on these bikes, apparently the cam, it's either the cam chain tensioner spring breaks or stretches out or something. I'm not exactly sure what goes wrong with it, but they make a kit to replace it with a more modern torsion style spring. And it comes with all the new engine gaskets and everything. So we're going to be knocking that out. That is one of the must do's according to the KLR forums. And anybody I've talked to about these bikes is go ahead and, you know, get it done. I don't actually know if this bike's had it done or not. The previous owner didn't know. So it's one of those peace of mind things to go ahead and knock out. This kit was not crazy expensive. And I can throw a link to this stuff below. I'm also going to be replacing the fuel mixture screw with one of these that has the little knurled wheel on the bottom so that I can make adjustments on the fly. So if I'm out riding and I want to make a little bit of an adjustment or, you know, say we're in the mountains somewhere and elevation changes are crazy, I can kind of tweak my carburetor very easily on the go. We're also going to be doing what they call on the KLR forum, I believe it's the 22 cent mod, and it's basically two number four washers that we're gonna put underneath the needle in our carburetor. That kind of changes the fueling, should give us a little bit better throttle response. And you know, for the cost of two washers, it's worth doing. So what I need to do now is get to access everything. So the, the uh, doohickey mod is gonna be under this case cover right here, but I need to get to the carburetor to make some of those adjustments. I think it's gonna be easier just to strip this whole top section off, take the seat off, take these side fairings off, pull the gas tank off as well. That way we can have kind of clean, easy access to everything. And we'll start to knock out the list. Got it in the air, gas tank and everything out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the carburetor mods first. So I should be able to just like pull this throttle bracket off and remove the cables to get this out of the way. Slide it up over here. And now I'll undo the boots. And supposedly I should be able to rotate this thing clockwise enough to be able to access the pilot screw underneath. So I know this is going to be a weird angle, but now that the choke cable is out of the way, we can slowly rotate this carb. This is about like that is all we need. I don't know if you can see in here, but this little 
nub right here. That's where our mixture screw is. So it's just a little flathead screw. I think some of these actually have a little plug in them that needs to be removed. This one has been removed before, so I can just unscrew that. Then I'll show you the new replacement piece I have. We'll install that and set it to uh, the correct amount of turns out. So here are the two mixture screws side by side. You can see that the bottom half is identical. And then the top half, instead of it having the little slot for you to stick a flathead screwdriver in there, it's got the little thumb wheel. Because where this is placed, you can't get a flathead screwdriver or any other tool that I could find in that space because it's only maybe, I don't know, a quarter inch from the bottom of the hole to, I believe, the starter. So there's not enough room to get any tool in there, so you can't make any adjustments on the fly. So if your mixture is off a little bit, you have to go through all the process I just did just to adjust it. So this, in theory, should let us adjust it as we go. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. And I'm going to set it to, I think, about two and a quarter to two and a half turns out. I'm going to start with about two and a quarter. That's what the forum say is good for uh, the high flow aftermarket exhaust that I have on this bike. So we got our slide over here. And originally, I was going to use what they call the 22 cent mod, like I mentioned, which is where you would place two uh, for the aftermarket exhaust setup. I have uh, number four washers underneath the clip to kind of space it up just a little bit, enriching the uh, fuel coming through. So my carburetor actually has an aftermarket needle that has different clip positions. So I won't need to utilize the washers i can actually just space this clip i'm going to go down one from where it was so that's going to be on the one two the third clip from the top right about the middle of this position we'll try that out if we need to make further adjustments uh, we can do that so that's going to be the modifications i'm going to do to the needle we're ready to slide this back in and get the carburetor hooked back up we'll go ahead and knock out this air filter real quick should be super simple Oof, look at that factory one. That thing is gross. I don't even know if this is factory, but the one that's on it at least. It doesn't seem very factory. It seems like it's very cheap foam. Oh, oh man. It's all stuck to my hands and everything. Uh, we got this nice Bike Master replacement. This is a lifetime filter. Uh, that doesn't mean you never have to change it. Well, I guess technically you don't have to change it, you just have to clean it. So once it gets all dirty, you can take it out, blow it out with compressed air, they make a special cleaner you can spray on it, blow it all out, re-oil it, and put it back in. So you don't ever have to buy another replacement, you just have to periodically clean this one. I'm gonna go ahead and jump onto the biggest portion of this project, which is the doohickey mod. So I'm not gonna do a how-to video on this because there was already a really good one uh, from the guys at Rocky Mountain ATV. So I'm actually following it myself and I will put a link to it in the description below if you guys have a KLR and wanna do this exact mod. Uh, this seems to be really good quality. So there's nothing I could do to improve it. So I'm gonna send you guys to them and I will just uh, keep you guys updated as I go through the process and get this thing knocked out. Making good progress here. Got the stator, stator cover off. All that kind of zip tied and out of the way. Still gotta pull this gasket off, but I'll do that a little bit later. Also pulled my starter gears out, making sure to keep track of all the little washers and the little bearings and everything that come out with it. So it can all go back in the way it's supposed to go. Now I have this big rotor bolt to remove. And that's what this tool is for. So I'm actually going to be able to use my engine guard to kind of hold this. So this is going to slide on like that. The side's going to rest up against my engine guard. I have this old torque wrench that I use as a breaker bar. There we go. I don't know how you do that without this tool, but made it pretty simple. Pull that off. 
So it's nice and loose now. And uh, this actually does, this kit comes with a replacement for this bolt as well. I guess this is probably like a stretch to yield or something like that bolt. Uh, so you're supposed to replace it. Kit comes with a new one. Now we're going to be looking to remove this rotor. So it comes with this little rotor puller, flywheel puller, whatever you call this. Screws in here. go all right now we should be able to screw this in boom should have been it okay And she's off. Now I just removed the next little engine cover and that actually gives us access to our little spring. So you can see this is just the factory style spring down here. We can actually go ahead and remove it. Just like that. So this is just the, can the tensioner for the counterbalancer, which is this guy right here. I don't know if you can see it around this engine case, it's just like this half moon shape. And that basically just offsets the vibration. Since this is just one big cylinder going up and down, you can imagine that that thing going up and down would cause a crazy amount of vibration. So this is a counterbalancer that's supposed to, like when the piston's going up, that's swinging down so that they kind of cancel each other out. So now that that's out of the way, we can work on removing all of our gaskets. We'll go around here, carefully peel all this gasket off. And then I'll use a little gasket scraper and just get the little remaining parts. And I'll do that for uh, all the other gasket mating surfaces as well. And then I think we're ready to move on to drilling the little hole and starting to install new parts. So we're ready for the modification that's unique to the torsion style spring. The other kits just include a new spring like the one we just pulled out. So this one, you have to drill a little hole in this case to hold that little tab on the spring there. They tell you that you should kind of center this spring over this hole and then you want that little tab to be right around the 5 to 530 position so that ends up being right in the little kind of flat area right there so once i get that kind of figured out exactly where it's going to be i'm going to use my little sitter and punch punch the mark and then they include this little drill bit to drill it out i'll clean up the hole make sure there's no metal shavings we're ready to push this in and start to go back together with everything there it is, all installed. Now we're ready to put on the new gasket, put this thing back in place. Well, I've run out of time, so I'm gonna have to wait on the sprockets and the chain until the next time I pull this bike in. The uh, ones that are on the bike right now really look to be in pretty decent shape. Um, so it's not a pressing matter, but we'll just make sure to do that the next time we have the bike up on the lift. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw it all back together and I wanna fire it up, see how it's running with our modifications we've made, and then take it for a ride and see how she does. All geared up, ready to fire this thing up, take it for a little test spin. See how she does, choke on, key on. Bye. 
tank, make sure it's still running like it should, make sure we don't discover any issues, and we'll call this thing ready for the next adventure. Well, as you can see, made it home safe and sound. No issues to report, so I am happy to say the KLR is back on the road and ready for some more adventures. So got some trips hopefully coming up soon. Uh, we're still trying to figure out some details and figure out where we want to go and who's all coming, that kind of stuff. But I uh, hope to get that thing out in the dirt again in the next couple of weeks, and I'll bring you guys along when I do. So I appreciate you watching this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one.